And some of these really old capsules are made out of like lead and you kind of don't want your wine to like hit lead right before you enjoy it. Okay. That makes sense. It doesn't, but okay. Uh, have you ever heard of lead poisoning? Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Paris Perfect and today Chris is educating us on how to decant an old bottle of wine or a bottle of wine that the cork ended up being just messy. Yeah, uh, and that happens, right? Old bottles of wine, you know, at, at the end of the day it's tree bark, right? It's yeah. going to break down. I still think it's a little funny that we're using tree bark these days to close up our wines, but that will be another segment. What would you, <laughs> what, would you, what would you use? I don't know. I mean, there does need to be a little bit of an air transfer. They've worked on, you know, uh, synthetic versions of cork. Screw caps, I think, are a little uh, too restrictive on, on any air transfer. And currently, in 2022, tree bark is still the best thing that, okay. that we can use. High quality tree bark is, is the best uh, so far that we've figured out as a society and a civilization. If you're gonna open up an old ball of wine, you pull out a cellar, if you can stand it up for a couple of days, it'll really help you out because all this sediment will kind of travel to the bottom of the bottle. If you can't, you'll want to open it. When you take that bottle out, you'll wanna you know, maybe have a little cradle, but you can always just kind of rig something up to where you put a, like a towel or two underneath it to keep it at this position and you can open it up in this position. But for today, uh, we're gonna open this one vertical. Well, yeah, let's do vertical. I don't think anybody is gonna go and get super wine, yeah, that's wine like, geeky and try to open it up sideways. That's well, yeah, yeah, the first time you do it, you spill a lot of wine and yeah, if it's an old ball of wine and you you're spilling it, it, someone's gonna be mad at you. One of my favorite openers, wine openers for really old bottles of wine is a Durand and it's a two-part Asso, which has been around for you know hundreds of years this is used to stick in the bottle it gets on either side of the cork and because what happens with old bottles of wine the cork fuses to the glass and that's why when if you just use a normal wine opener and you go to pull the cork out all you pull out is the middle of the cork and all the rest of the cork is in there it's a real pain there's, in the ass there's nothing else we could do with a regular wine opener that'll help that cork well these kind of help that but sometimes with the really old bottles of wine you can end up pushing the cork in which is not what you want to do. So this, as a step one, holds the cork in place, and this, step two, you just give it a quick 360 turn, and you've now detached yeah. the cork from, from the glass. So what we're gonna do here first is we're gonna just, we're gonna cut the capsule here. If you wanna just rip the whole thing off, you can. I see people sometimes cutting the capsule right here. You wanna go below this lip here, because wine will, come over this and it'll roll over this area. And if there's like dirt and junk and some of these really old capsules are made out of like lead and you kind of don't want your wine to like hit lead right before you enjoy it. Okay. That makes sense. It doesn't, but okay. Uh, have you ever heard of lead poisoning? I've heard the term. Okay, yeah, that's what we're trying to negate. As you can see here, this is this bottle was kept really well. Yeah. Um, the top of the cork looks good. Uh, again, this is this is super promising for this old uh, Argentine cab. To Adrian's point, if you don't have a Durand and you just have a, like a normal waiter's wine key, what you'll want to do is you'll you'll put the cork screw all the way in, and then you'll want to just very very slowly pull up on the corkscrew handle, but you're gonna need to really pay attention to what is the top of that cork doing. If the top of the cork is doing this and it's mounding up, that means you're about to rip out the center of the cork and you should just back it all the way down and maybe go find something like this, or you better have a funnel and a screen. Sometimes I'll even use a coffee filter handy um, because you're gonna end up with a lot of kind of chunks in the wine. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this Duran because you'd never break a cork using this guy here. So we're gonna make sure we go down the center of the, of the cork here, all the way flush until it hits the glass. Now there's two little slits here, which can almost invite you to, to put the also in those two slits. That's not where you're supposed to put it. You're supposed to That's go- That's how it stores. Yeah, it's how it stores. So you go across and you just kind of wiggle it down, wiggle it down, all right? And then one, two. I know that it's completely free and then I'll just pull it up. Look how little this cork is. 
<laughs> it's like the smallest cork in the world. The disc cork feels pretty good. I probably could have gotten it out with a, with a normal wine opener, but you just never know. But this is, you know, in assessing and looking at the cork, you've got wine traveling about half the way up, which is pretty good. The, no, none of the wine has traveled all the way up, which is a really good sign that it had a, a fairly decent home for uh, most of its life. This is a 1978 Cabernet from Salta, Argentina. You often see people using a candle, right? And uh, a lot of people have told me, well, why would you wanna heat the wine up when you're decanting it? And the answer to that is, you don't wanna heat the wine up. <laughs> this there, because it's very, very bright. A candle is very bright in the center. So what I do uh, is I use my cell phone uh, because cell phones are very bright. So I take the uh, flashlight option. And what we're trying to do is create a line of sight from my eye to the light and the wine bottle is gonna go in the middle. And that's what we're looking at. And in the beginning, all you wanna do is concentrate on pouring the wine slowly without missing into the decanter. If you're focused too much on looking through uh, to see if sediment is going in the bottle, you'll potentially miss the decanter and then you're spilling wine again and you're in that no-go range. So after it stops glugging, which is about you know, when you've got about a quarter of the bottle out, it'll just pour nice and steadily. And what I wanna do is I'm watching right on the shoulder of the bottle, right before the rest of the bottle meets the neck. And I wanna make sure that uh, as the sediment comes down, hopefully you don't have someone hitting your arm like that when you're decanting. Um, and there we go. There's a little bit of sediment in the, in the bottom of the bottle. You can see this kind of, this film. So it's yeah. actually got a film all the way around. That's the, where the rest of the sediment is. It's Pretty not fine. super cloudy. It's got a little bit of cloudiness to it. Mm. That looks good. Looks good. I'll let you be the judge. You tell right. me. Now you just put it in the decanter and poured it right in. So normally you put it in the decanter and then you, you wait a little bit or? Well, you, it depends. Sometimes wines are ready to go right off. Like basically I just assess it. I'll taste it right now. And if it's good, then we're ready to go. If it's still kind of tight or kind of funky, because a lot of older wines will be a little funky town. When you first open them up, it kind of needs to hit snooze, right? It's very light. Like there's no body to it. There's no. Let me see it. Yeah, it has, it has a little bit of that funkiness to it. But if you can see by the color here, it has some kind of bricking and browning around the edges. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what happens with older wine. So it's probably, it's probably a little past its prime. It's good. It might get a little bit better in a decanter, but I think that's, we've probably seen its best days are behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, thank you for educating us on how to use a decanter with old wines, with wines where you break up the cork. Thank you guys, thank you for watching and uh, subscribe, like, and let us know uh, what you think. Also, we can uh, use this in hand in hand with the glassware. Yep. Come back and join us for other educational, wine educational videos. We'll be kind of dropping these, sprinkling them along with some of our other content. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you guys. All Next right. Time. Ciao.